Oh, hi there. I wanted to take a second to talk about the ways in which we allow our expectations to diminish our happiness with reality. And this is something that I think about quite often. It's a philosophy that I've tried to live by for a while now, but it was brought to the forefront of my mind when a friend of mine came to me and complained about the degree she was doing, saying that it was too hard, she didn't want to do it anymore. So I asked her when she was going to quit and she replied she wasn't going to quit. She wanted the degree, she just didn't want to do all the studying. But that's dumb. So I told her, that's dumb. That doesn't exist. A degree would be worthless without the knowledge that it signifies you have, knowledge that you attain through study. If somebody gave you a medical degree without you ever having studied medicine, you'd be facing malpractice lawsuits within an hour of working as a medical professional. Now, I know I'm being willfully obtuse. She was just trying to vent but she's making herself feel even worse about an already difficult situation by comparing it to a scenario that is not only imaginary, it's nonsensical. It's an unrealistic expectation to have. So how do we stop this from happening? How do we stop our expectations, unrealistic or otherwise, from reducing our happiness in the moment? The Buddhist solution to this is to have no expectations, live completely in the moment, and the happiness formula follows along the same way of thinking. Happiness equals reality minus expectations. The lower the expectations, the less disappointment. The less disappointment, the more happiness. The problem with that is an expectation is just an imagined possible future. And we don't want to stop imagining possible futures. Besides the fact that we'd miss out on some great sci-fi movies, our ability to imagine various different outcomes is the basis of all creativity. It's what sets us apart from every other species on the planet. In most animals, the input and output sections of the brain are in very close proximity, which means there's very little space for hypothesizing in between. Most animals operate purely on instinct, input, output, see food, eat food. In humans, the input and output sections of the brain are much further apart. In fact, we have the ability to push all of our input right away through our prefrontal cortex. Our prefrontal cortex has the ability to metaphysically remove us from our current time and location, and run through all these different scenarios, like a simulator. So when we see food, we could eat food, or we could make art with food, we could make medicine with food, we could use food to grow more food, we could use food as bait, we could insert food into our bodies for sexual pleasure. I'm really not here to judge. Our ability to imagine all these different possible futures is how we came up with math, science, art, literature, the Kardashians, and everything in between. Perhaps the solution is just to make a distinction between imagining and expecting. Imagine, but don't expect. Possibly. But how easy will it be to find the motivation to complete a difficult task if you've got absolutely no expectation that you'll be successful? If you want to be successful at something, you need to believe that you will succeed in order to fully commit to it. Yes! I won and you lost, you loser, because I believed I would win. It could be argued that an expectation should be the future which is deemed most likely to occur. But people take risks all the time. Risks that they don't think will pay off, but they know could pay off. When Usain Bolt first started training for the 100 meters, it wasn't likely that he'd go on to become the greatest sprinter that ever lived, but he thought that there was a chance. And thanks to his persistence, we now get to enjoy super fast Virgin Media broadband. Keep your head still. Not only is it inevitable that we run through these simulations, it's also incredibly useful because, first of all, it helps us to prepare for future events. Whatever scenario we find ourselves living through, chances are we already anticipated something similar. We had an idea of what it was going to be like and therefore we're better equipped to deal with it. Secondly, it helps us to identify more favorable possible futures so that we can nudge events towards those outcomes. Notice that both the ways in which this ability is advantageous applies to us using it to influence future events. When we imagine future scenarios, we know that what we're imagining is a possible future. It could one day exist or we hope to bring it into existence and therefore it's useful. So keep imagining possible futures. Imagine the shit out of the future because I'm still waiting for people to invent hoverboards. And I don't, I don't mean them things on wheels, I mean actual hoverboards, I want that. What wouldn't make sense would be for me to be upset today and disappointed because hoverboards don't yet exist. When we imagine the present is anything other than what it is, well, we already know the present is not what we're imagining. The present is the present. So whilst it can be fun if you're making a game out of it, it's not particularly useful. In fact, if you're responding emotionally to it, it can be harmful because you're allowing something that isn't real to negatively affect your happiness. It's the equivalent of cutting off ties of a close friend because you dreamt you had an argument with them. We must respond emotionally to reality because reality is hard enough without us adding all this other stuff to it. 
There's a myriad of reasons as to why we might be responding emotionally to imaginary input, but probably most common of all is that we're just not in the habit of critiquing our own thoughts. We automatically believe everything we think and feel as though we couldn't possibly be wrong, which of course is just hubris. Take a second to analyze your emotions. Are you responding to something real? Is it the correct emotional response? And also, you're not the center of the universe. Take a second to consider whether or not you'd still feel the same if the situation was reversed. Another common reason for some of us might be that we don't have full control over our imaginations. It runs riot because we don't often enough apply it to activities that require it. We're not reading, we're not writing, drawing, painting or planning, and we only ever watch reality TV, so we're never exposed to new information and ideas that require us to think and work things out and ask ourselves questions. We're not providing ourselves with targets towards which we can practice focusing our imaginations, and therefore we end up applying our imaginations to everything at all times without even realizing we're doing it. What we need is a touch of stoicism. It's imperative that we understand what is and isn't within our control and accept those realities. It's within our power to study or not study. It's not within our power to change what's required of us to be awarded a degree. We can affect the future, we can't affect the present. So apply your imagination to the future and not the present. Replace your I wish with I'm going to. The solution is to be on the lookout for the moment and expectation plays out its usefulness, which will usually be the moment is proven false by the present. When that happens, what you'll find is the only thing that you have to compare the actual reality of the present to is the past. And even if you failed at something recently, you'll discover that you've either made progress in the attempt or at the very least you've learned something which will all help you to feel more positively about failure going forward. It is so important that you moderate your negative feelings towards failed attempts because if you don't, you'll be far less likely to ever try again. That's just basic negative and positive reinforcement. We tend to associate negative feelings with the action that preceded them, which then makes us far less motivated to ever repeat those actions. Okay, so at this point, I've gone through quite a few different ideas and it may seem like a lot to take in, slightly convoluted. But keep in mind, what we're talking about is reconditioning our minds and the way we think in order to attain better mental health. Unfortunately, there's not going to be any simple solution to that, but I will summarize in three points. Firstly, just practice. Practice using your imagination and practice separating the things you want or the things you fear from the reality. Okay, so let's say that we're about to climb a mountain and when we're at base camp, we're going to be thinking, we're going to be imagining what it will be like to reach the summit we'll be thinking about the sense of achievement we'll feel and the amazing view we'll be able to see. And all of this is good stuff. It's good to imagine that. It's motivation that will help us to get up the mountain. Now let's say, unfortunately, in the time we've allowed ourselves to get to the summit, we only managed to get to about halfway up the mountain. And for whatever reason, we can't go any further. Perhaps we've sustained injury or there's adverse weather conditions or we've run out of supplies. So we're halfway up the mountain and we're feeling disappointed as is only natural. What we need to do now is let our emotional maturity kick in and take a second to realize that what we're doing, the reason we feel disappointed is because we're comparing the feeling of being at the summit to the feeling of being halfway. But of course, we don't actually know what it feels like to be at the summit. We've never been at the summit. That's not a reference we have to call on. So what we then need to do is compare the reality of being at halfway to the past where we were only at base camp. When we do that, what we realize is that only positive things have happened. We've made progress. Not all the progress we wanted to make, but all we've done is made progress. The mere fact that that thought has crossed your mind will make you feel more positive about your failed attempt. So let go of that false future. Stop wishing your present was any different and instead take a moment to enjoy the view from where you are. Enjoy what you have accomplished and let those positive feelings motivate you towards imagining a new future. Start imagining your second attempt at summit in the mountain. Now with a more accurate idea of what that will take. So go and recuperate, retrain, replenish, replace your I wish with I'm going to and reclimb that mountain.